How's it going? So, you know what I've been into lately? Ghosts. Oh, yeah, hold on, let me get this. Hello? Yeah, good night, mate. Is this Cranktown speaking? Ah, uh, yeah, is this the Nigerian prince? Don't worry, man. I sent the money. It should be there soon. No, it's Finley. That, that doesn't matter. This is about the toast. Toast? The toast I bet I can cook faster than you. It's on! So yeah, toast. I've been challenged to see who can cook toast the fastest by Finley Shellard. He's kind of just started on YouTube, but I think that he makes really good videos. Go check him out. I think it's here. Maybe here. Mm -hmm. But anyway, toast. So I'm planning to accomplish this toast cooking feat using this dusty old microwave that's been sitting in the rain on the side of the house for the last five months. So I guess first things first, we gotta see if this thing works at all. I'm weirdly scared. Well, it seems to be microwaving. Oh, gross. Good thing I just have a microwave collection on the side of the house for some reason. Oh yeah, it works. It's mildly cleaner. So my initial plan was to take a microwave and jam like three magnetrons on it and have some sort of uh, high voltage heated searing mechanism. But I've recently become interested in making plasmoid in the microwave, which I know is like 2008 YouTube stuff, but it's still cool now. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Wow, we got a couple seconds of one. Now the reason I want to use that to cook my toast is it's a great amount of power in a small space. And it's freaking cool, man. So we got to find a way to reliably ignite this plasmoid and see if we can find a way to control it. So first things first, clearly the most important part, we need to get good shots. So I'm taking one out of Nile Red's playbook here. Just gonna drill a hole in the back and mount a cell phone. And with the wavelength of the microwave generated by this machine being about 12 millimeters, any hole under 6 millimeters should not let microwaves escape. So, hopefully I don't ruin this new phone I bought. <laughs> Perfect. So I filmed all these clips in my free time over a couple of days, so the cohesiveness really fell to bits. So here's voice over me professional, right? I first tried to make a semi-permanent igniter using an eighth inch sheet of aluminum cut into a circle with a graphite electrode sticking up in the middle. The disc was cut at six centimeters with the assumption that that will match the wavelength of the microwave once it's passing through the aluminum because that's when all the funky stuff happens. This was not the most successful. The next thing I tried was a piezoelectric crystal. I just shoved some wires in through the back and made an arc in the chamber using the igniter from a barbecue lighter. Hey, that rhymes. This worked. Until it didn't. I finally landed on this quote-unquote final igniter design, which is a 12 centimeter disc to match the wavelength of the microwaves in open atmosphere, much thinner than before, with a carbon electrode sticking out of the middle. Roll the results. <laughs> oh yeah! Still not very stable. I mean, that was promising. <laughs> Our jars seen better days. The electrode doesn't seem too damaged. I think I want to try it with a thicker one though. Just in case. More meat, more better, you know? Well, got another jar in there. Look at that! I'm not going too long. I've already broken enough of those jars. My girlfriend is very upset with me for that. That seems stable, though. So my next escapade was to try and control the plasma. To keep it from melting and breaking my jars. I broke so many. So my first try, I took an air hose and attached it at an angle to the jar to try and make a circular airflow through the jar. This just made it very difficult to make a stable plasmoid in there, no matter how low I turn the air. The next thing I tried were magnets. 
which definitely had some interesting results, but again, made the plasma much less stable and didn't seem very viable to control it. So, I threw that plan right out the window. It seems that controlling the plasma is going to be much more difficult than I had imagined it might have been. So, if we can't control the plasma, why don't we just control the toast? So I've hot glued a couple pieces of acrylic to kind of form the bottom half of our jar. And then we'll use our pre-toast for the top half of the jar. Eh? I think we can use this. Looks like toast to me. Delicious. Now to guide our little plasma beam, I've got a piece of acrylic tubing. Now uh, acrylic probably isn't the best material because it'll melt, but I want to be able to see through it and can't do this in glass tubing, so it'll do. This will go on just like that, using our favorite hot glue. Let's see what this looks like in there. Here we go. Oh yeah. I think that'll work. So our little plasma stack seems like it's working all right. Now, we need a way to manipulate the toast. Initially, I thought I'd pull the magnetron out of this thing and, you know, rebuild the chamber purpose built for this. But I'm not too keen on cooking my eyeballs, so I kind of want to keep everything within the, you know, the chamber that the engineers built. <laughs> so, I've got an idea. So here's what I'm thinking. We're gonna have an axis that goes back and forth that holds a stepper. We'll have another axis that tilts this one and then the stepper on top will be able to spin the thing. And this will all just poke a wire through the hole and hopefully we'll be able to manipulate the toast inside on the end of that wire with these three axes. So first things first, we need a hinge. So we got ourselves a cute little hinge now. Now we need a piece to mount the linear rail onto. So, went ahead and got this guy put together. That will be welded to one side of the hinge, like so. The other side of the hinge just gets a little mounting plate. Beautiful, now we got our little pivot point. So in order to mount our linear rail, Damn. where was I? Yeah, I've t I've drilled and tapped these holes. Is what I was gonna say. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna use nuts. Got our linear rail attached. That tap that I broke. That was obviously intentional, so I could mount a pillow block bearing. Right? This guy goes on here, just like that. Now in order to pull this thing back and forth, I made this little piece to go on the lead screw. And to attach this in the correct position, I'm gonna be doing a bit of a sketchy maneuver here. I don't even have any anti-spatter spray. Cross your fingers. Well, that, that seemed reasonably okay. So we got this thing moving pretty good. Now to drive it, it looks like I need to have this lined up with the bottom of the linear rail. So I made this little piece, which will weld on there just like that. If I could stand it up, screw it, I'll weld the front. Alrighty, so we've got our back and forth, motor mounts and all. We got our spinny spinny. Now we just need our Turny, turny. I'm thinking I'm just gonna do this with a timing belt. So, I've got a piece of flat bar. We're gonna go step around here. Idler pulley over here. And then we can just put our other side of the hinge on here. We just need a new plan for mounting it to the microwave, but you know, we'll figure that out later. Perfect. Now I just gotta add these little timing belt grabbers onto our piece. So just like that, we've got all three of our axes. We just need one more part to make this thing work.
Here we've got our working end. This guy goes onto the end of a stepper, which will be mounted right here, and it can be twisted, it can be turned, and it can be moved in and out. So, I'm gonna install the steppers on here, then let's mount this to the microwave. This guy is going to install on the back of the microwave, just using pop rivets. If they'll actually work. Beautiful. So we got this guy installed. Now we just slide our little rod in there. Attach it to the hinge. Now you may be thinking, that's gonna sag way too much. Don't you worry. I planned for this. Don't laugh at me too much. I've gone ahead and installed the motor and the belt on the back. So now that will be able to pull this back and forth. Now, last thing we gotta do. Need a little toast holster. Beautiful. And just like that, we've got a fully manipulatable piece of toast through a small hole. Ah, oh, shit, I think I need to adjust that a little bit. I'm gonna wire this machine up and I'll be back. Ta-da! Looks like a normal unsuspecting microwave, huh? Well, if you take a peek in the back, we've got our whole setup. Now everything is controlled by an Arduino Uno with a CNC shield. I didn't install Gerbil on here, I'm just using it to steal the stepper drives. And it's literally just running a sequence of movements to get full coverage on the toast. So, ain't nothing to do but to give it a whack. So, as you can see, we've got our electrode in there. Then we take our pre-toast and stick it on the little toast fork. Then we home the machine by lining it up with our precision sharpie marks. Here goes nothing, man. And we're back. As you can see, things have changed in here. I think the toast was absorbing too many of the microwaves, so I came in and made a little bit of a waveguide here. And then rather than the acrylic tube, I've made a little guard out of aluminum sheet in hopes that it'll reflect the waves a little better. Oops. And as you can see, it seems to work all right. Uh, I've also added an extra fork onto the toast holster, if you will. Just because once it would flip over, it'd flop down and start hitting stuff. So it's a little more difficult to load the bread. But the rest of this is just so hyper efficient. You won't even notice. Got our bread loaded. Let's get this bread toasted. that I, I didn't keep track oh it's it's toasty in there now look at that if that ain't toast I don't know what toast is no not floppy semi charred definitely cooked all the way through eh tastes like shit that's toast man I gotta stop eating those there's definitely remnants of the electrode coating that thing but you know the price we pay for efficiency right well won't be needing this anymore. Pew! So, we got our toast. Now, full disclosure, it's a couple days later and this thing's so stale I picked it up and it broke to pieces. But, lightly charred, definitely cooked all the way through because it was in a frickin' microwave. So we got a two-stage cooking process. Now clocking in at 40 seconds isn't really great, per se, but you gotta give me some cool points for plasma, right? Everybody loves plasma. Uh, make sure you go check out Finley's video. 
I've been intentionally kept in the dark on what he's been doing, but I've seen bits and pieces and he went all out. So check it out. It's one of these places. But yeah, that's what I got for you this time. If you like what you saw, leave a good old danger. Think about subscribing and thank you for watching. There's a spider web on my camera. Ha <laughs> ha.